So today we're going to be embarking on a vlog project that puts my entire fate in other booktubers hands, which is never a good idea. <laughs> This is a style of vlog that I did many times a couple of years ago and I've always wanted to bring back but it's called booktuber scavenger hunt because I'm being sent from one booktuber to another. <laughs> the idea is I go to the first booktuber, they give me a reading prompt and then based on what I think of that book, they give me the next booktuber to go to for the next reading prompt. So booktubers are giving me reading prompts that decide what I read and I also have no control beyond the first booktuber what booktubers I'm going to see. <laughs> I think this is always really fun. I like putting my fate in other people, so let's just get into it. Okay, hi. <laughs> I don't know if I'm looking bedraggled. I'm feeling it. It's the end of a very hot day here in the UK, but more importantly, it's time to find out what the first book we're gonna be reading is and what the first prompt is gonna be because I'm <laughs> so nervous. I was just on a Zoom um, with some of my patrons and I was saying like how nervous this makes me like not knowing what I'm gonna read. Past Megan will have already explained this whole situation but we're gonna have a reading prompt from a booktuber. Then we'll read a book then they'll give us the next booktuber to go to. And the first booktuber I've chosen is Gabby. Oh my god I'm so excited! <laughs> I love Gabby's videos. Gabby's one of the booktubers I watch the most. Gabby also runs Summer Ween which like iconic and all the weens. <laughs> Ween readathons. And they always have really good reading prompts but also like accessible reading prompts which is part of the reason why I chose Gabby first because I feel like I need someone to go a little bit easy on me like I don't want someone I feel like once Aaron gave me Aaron from Booked and Be Busy gave Beezy <laughs> sorry I'm like so hot I can't speak I swear once Aaron gave me the prompt like read the longest book or most intimidating book on a TBR and I was like <laughs> ready to fight <laughs> so I'm hoping Gabby's prompt will be like accessible and easy for me to do kind of but still a bit challenging I don't know um in terms of the books we're going to be prioritizing these are the books I need shit <laughs> uh, apart from this top one these have all been on TBR Cluedo and I still haven't read them so I really should prioritize those and then this month I have got to read this book so it'd be great if I could fit it into a reading vlog because I'm a guest host on Kayla's Literary Dead book club which I'm very excited for so I'd like to vlog this book The Devotion of Suspect X if I can other than that I'm kind of fancying short books at the moment like I feel like I've been reading a lot of longer books and I'm in a bit of a slump but I, I just want good books to be honest but I mean we can't <laughs> we can't choose that ahead of time let's just watch the video I am so nervous you guys don't understand how nervous doing these make me hey Meg how's it going Hi. I hope that you're doing well and thank you so much for asking me to be a part of this little experiment that you're doing I think it sounds so much fun I know you asked me for a book prompt and instead yes. of being you know basic and just giving you one prompt I thought it would be fun to give you six different prompts no. and basically like the idea that I had behind this would be it would be a little bit more interactive for you because I thought you could roll a dice and oh. depending on which number out of the six that you get that would be the prompt <laughs> that you would have to complete and if you don't have a dice I figured you could just use like a random number generator to pick like one through six but anyways so this oh my god okay pause 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 i thought i actually had a heart attack oh my god <laughs> oh god my heart hurts <sighs> i thought gabby was gonna give me six book prompts i was gonna have to find a book that fit all six i was ready to leave i was ready to say sorry gabby i'm not making the video anymore thank you for your time but it's not happening <laughs> We've got six and we'll roll, I think I'll just Google roll a dice because I can't we've got loads of dice in the house My dad is a big gamer Big gamer so We have a lot of dice in the house and so does my brother has loads of dice But I can't be bothered to go find them so we'll just do roll a dice on here Okay, so we have six prompts This is heartbreaking because there could be some prompts that I really want and then I don't get it Or there could be prompts that I don't want and then I get that one Okay, right The six different prompts that I have I So if you do longer. end up rolling a one then your prompts would be to read a thriller with orange and black on the cover Okay If you roll a two then you will be reading a horror book with red on the cover if you okay. roll a three, you will read the first book that you see on your shelf that has green on the spine. That's on your TBR, of course. And then if you roll a okay. four, then your prompt will be to read a book from my oh. 2022 favorites video that you have not yet read. And what? then if you roll a five, it'll be to read a thriller with black or white text on the cover. And then if you roll a six, it'll be to read a horror book with trees on the cover. What? And so I figured this would be a little bit more fun and, you know, kind of like raise the stakes to see if you'll have to like roll a dice and just figure it out. I think it would be fun oh. for you. And and thank you so much again. I hope you have fun with these prompts. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm gonna record my screen. Don't judge me that my phone's on like 8% battery, okay? Which signal that. I don't even know which of those prompts I want. I don't want the one that's 
Gabby's, like a book from Gabby's favourites. Not that I don't trust Gabby, but like that's specific, right? The other books we can work around. We can figure this shit out. That's so specific. That's what 10 books and I could like own none of them. Okay, alrighty. So if I just say roll a dice, Google will do it. Two. Oh my God, that was so fast. There was like no suspense there. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, what is prompt two? What is prompt two? Read a horror book with red on the cover. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, let me record my screen. <laughs> I don't have a ton of horror on my TBR. I think it'll be easier to go, because I I sort my own TBR into all the genres as well for TBR Cluedo. When I get a prompt on TBR Cluedo, it's easier for me to go and look. So I have all the horror books um, listed. Let's record my screen and go see I think this will be an easier way to look at it versus searching through my TBR. Horror, I only have like 24 books. <sighs> right, I had the audiobook for Last Final Girl. A lot of these are gonna be audiobooks. White Horse by Erica T. Worth has like red as the, the text. <laughs> okay, none of those are really red. Plain Bad Herods is an audiobook. Oh, the, wait. What colour is my copy of The Drift? And is that class as a horror? Because if so, maybe we'll read that. Yeah, okay. Goodreads, the first genre is horror. Oh my god. Oh shit! I put my drink there. Jesus, Mary and Joseph! Woo. Um, The Drift. The Drift, The Drift, The Drift. <gasps> okay, we're gonna read the- I'm so excited! Firstly, this is a 2023 release, which I have not been getting around to enough. So we've got a 2023 release. There was no horror with red on the cover over there in that stack that I showed you. Was there? No, there wasn't. But we're gonna read The Drift, The Drift, The Drift, The Drift by CG Tudor. I've been so excited to read this. I've heard such great things. I think it'll be a really fun, quick read. Gabby, you've done me well. Okay, let's begin it. I am so excited. Okay, my friends, I am halfway through the drift. I'm just using the dust jacket as a bookmark. I don't know why. <laughs> I, when I was adding this to Goodreads uh, the other day, I noticed that Gabby gave this one star. <laughs> irony that I am reading it for her prompt. I feel like I vaguely remember watching the vlog maybe where Gabby read this but I've like I forgot about it but yeah I picked a book that she gave one star. But I am really enjoying this so this is like a dystopian thriller horror mystery hybrid. We're actually it's set after slash during a pandemic so Ooh. We've got three different storylines happening. We've got an overturned coach full of students, all of them are trapped, a stranded cable car full of strangers, one of them is dead, an isolated chalet full of friends, soon they'll be enemies. And it's all through this lens of this pandemic. So they're like, is someone ill? There's these things called whistlers who are like people who have been infected with this disease, um, but are still alive because it's like named after the sound they make when they're breathing or whatever. And yeah, three different storylines, which you may be thinking, Megan, usually don't like split timelines, but actually I'm enjoying it in this because my problem is, is when there's two, I really don't like two, where they're like supposed to be equal, but one is obviously better, right? Whereas all three of these are actually intriguing me, which is hard to do. See, she just out here doing the impossible. All of them are probably intriguing me equally, or there's like phases where maybe one of them is intriguing me more, but they're kind of all each taking a turn in that. And I'm really enjoying it. I think CJ Tudor is just a great writer of like a fun thriller. And this isn't gonna be a five star, I don't think. 
think for me but I really love the pandemic setting I think it's very interesting it's so hot in the UK at the moment and this book is set in the snow <laughs> which I mean it would be fun to read this in the winter but also I think sometimes it's fun to read a book in like the opposite setting than what you're in so when it's really hot reading a cold wintry book and when it's really cold reading a summery book I think that can be fun as well like the juxtaposition and really putting you in that world is if they can do that it's really fun we're halfway through but I feel like we're just starting to find out answers about the different timelines and like more mysteries are being opened up I'm wondering how they're gonna come together because they've got to somehow right part of me is wondering and I don't this isn't a spoiler because there's been nothing that suggests this I've just read a lot of thrillers but part Part of me is wondering I'm a little bit suspicious I've got my my magnifying glass out but yeah I'm reading it really fast as well it's a very quick fast pace read so I'm really enjoying it I'm gonna go ahead I need to edit a video today but then the aim is to probably finish this tonight and it's a pretty quick read so I'm hoping I will be I'm gonna like edit my video as like quickly as I can because I want to finish this I'm enjoying it at the moment I would say it's a solid four star you know that's what I would say it is at the moment so yeah I'm gonna go ahead finish this and I'll check in with you probably this evening maybe I'm hoping to finish it before I go to bed tonight so probably late this evening with my thoughts okay <laughs> so in the last clip you would have seen there was a moment I've had to bleep out because I basically tell you the whole plot of this book <laughs> I tell you the big reveal I had it like completely down and I thought to myself like should I just include it because I, I mean I hadn't read the book I only read half of it <laughs> but I can't spoil the book for you so turns out the big twist in this like I knew it I knew the I knew the big twist I didn't quite figure out how all the different characters played into that twist but I knew the big twist now here's the thing I think it's a fairly obvious direction for this story to go once you start it like once you've kind of got the initial uh, plots of each of these scenarios you kind of go okay I can see where this might go like it's fairly natural I'd say within the first like 50 pages to think this but I basically told you the whole other thing so we had to leave that bit out I like the twist but I feel like the ending like the end scenes because the twist happens I would say like a maybe 100 pages 80 pages like we start to get an inkling of it um, from the end but then like obviously the ending is like its whole thing and I'm not sure the ending completely worked slash was satisfying slash all the dots were joined up by the end you know and I don't think it was necessarily trying to leave dots open like for fun I just think maybe certain dots were left in the wind I don't know what the fuck she's saying but girl I am living so I finished this last night and I've been really debating what to rate it because I had a great time reading it it's such a compulsively readable thriller I feel like I haven't read one like this in a long time where it's just so easy it's so easy to read it and get through it and like you're turning the pages so I had a great reading experience but the ending didn't do quite do it for me so I was hovering between a 3.5 and a 4 and by the end I was like it's like maybe a 3.75 like a 3.8 it will be <laughs> If we're being picky, so I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a four. I think it's fun, you know? I can't believe I read the most wintry book ever in <laughs> summer. Um, but like I said, I think that's fun sometimes. And I just want you to be warned, there is some strong body horror in this. Like, strong ass body horror. If you're squeamish, here's the thing, right? I, when I get to those scenes, I kind of just like read it really fast so I know vaguely what's going on but I don't like pour over it every word like damn the blood gushed or oh, whatever like <laughs> I don't want to know that but those scenes they were strong there was a few moments in this book with body horror that made my jaw hang open hang open hang open yeah I enjoyed it I think it's fun I'm not necessarily gonna like remember it for years to come but I think Cedar Judah just gives me that quick fun like good vibe what I want you know so I asked Gabby which booktuber I should go to for my next reading prompt plumped plumped <laughs> my next reading prompt and she said Katie Coulson so I have messaged Katie um and I'm hopefully gonna get that maybe later today or tomorrow so we'll just wait in suspense <laughs> <laughs> nervousness now um I don't know what to expect I don't know what prompt Kate's gonna give me but I'm excited to find out I do like getting reading prompts guys I think it makes reading fun like 
I'm such a planned reader. Yes, it gives me anxiety, but there's something fun about just being like, oh, I have to read this book now. Let's go with it. So anyways, I'll check in with you once I've got Katie's video. Hi. <laughs> this is like chaotic. I just, oh my God. I just was out. It's my mum's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's my mom's birthday and we were out at my grandparents and I got a notification come through so included sent me the prompt and I it took all my willpower not to read it right there and then so I rushed home no I didn't leave early just to <laughs> find out the prompt but it's time to find out what Katie's prompt is and Katie says something to me when we were talking on like DMs sorry this is crooked oh my god um like you might not want to do what I've chosen don't make me nervous, Katie. Okay, right, I've got it right here in front of me. We're gonna watch it. I'm so excited. I just love getting reading prompts, guys. Okay, ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, Meg. Hey. Katie Colson here. Oh my God. Thanks hey, for including babe. me in this video. And also thank you, Gabby, yeah. for pushing Meg Thanks in my Gabby. direction because I'm here to promote my agenda. <laughs> I want you to take the Enneagram. I want you to share the pie chart with the class once you're done taking it. And then you can do one of two things. You can either look up book recommendations based on that Enneagram. But what I would suggest more than that is looking up book characters that are blank Enneagram and finding a book that's on your TBR that has a character that people think is that Enneagram type and reading that book. Or you can send me a picture of your TBR and I can tell you which books I think you should read based on your Enneagram. I just love the Enneagram and I'm here to force everybody to take the test and the amount of people that I have gathered into this army <laughs> is vast. Okay. But I will say that if that's too difficult, then do you remember in booktuber battle when you made me find a book that had all the letters in my first name? Yeah. Everybody's going to be screaming like, Katie, there's one right there. <laughs> oh, how the turned tables, Megan. M and a G and an N yeah. all in the same title. Tricky. Enneagram's looking easy now, isn't it? But that would be my second prompt if the first one is too complex. So thank you for letting me be in this video and I hope to hear from you very soon. Okay. <laughs> right. How long? I've done it before, I feel like, the Enneagram thing. <laughs> I'm not down with this kind of stuff. And I found out what I was. Do I screen record this or do I just go away and do it? I think it's going to take like 15 minutes, right? You don't need to see all my answers. You don't need to know my deepest thoughts and feelings. Okay, I will... G oh, there's a lot. Okay, I'm going to go away. I'm going to do the test. I found one on Truity. I don't know if that's the best one. And I'll be back. And then we'll find a book together. My problem with this, right, is a, for a book to be on, like, Enneagram list, it's going to be a popular book, right? It's going to be a popular book. Okay, right, I'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> Five minutes later. Okay, this says I'm a three. <laughs> okay, that means I feel like I've done this before when I've gotten a one. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know if it, I just quiz didn't feel like the best, but I want to keep going on and doing other ones and getting different. But this is what this says. This is a three. But the, okay, three is defined by their desire to achieve. They want to advance in the world and will sacrifice almost anything for success. See, I don't think that necessarily is me. Yes, succeeding is a very important part of my life and like achieving my goals. I always have very strict goals for what I want to achieve. But I don't know if I am a three. What is one? I don't know. But let's go with three. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I, have, I like to stand out and have a burning need to be admired and see life as a game where winning is emphasis. See, I don't think that is me. Should I do another quiz? I'm just gonna keep doing quizzes until I get one that I <laughs> trust. That's because all of the questions were like, do you have goals? Do you succeed? I'm like, do you want to succeed? I'm like, well, yeah. But like, <laughs> let me go do another one. Hang on. Right, I did another one. It turns out I'm a three. <laughs> I didn't think I was a three, but I'm a three. This one says I'm a three as well. Okay. I can't believe that. I do like to accomplish goals and I plan things out far into the future. So I'm like, I'm a big planner. I like thinking about what I'm going to achieve in years to come, you know, I guess. Okay, right, right, right. Let's Google book recommendations for Enneagram type three. Let's start, let's find some lists. Oh my God, I'm nervous. What if there's no book that's on my TBR? Best books for type, these are all going to be... I don't trust this list. We're not. This is. <laughs> oh, Book Riot. Book Riot. I know have good ones. Okay, okay, okay. Severance by Ling Ma. I don't own. Burnout. I don't own. That's it. Okay, well. <laughs> this is all going to be non-fiction though. I will read a non-fiction if I have it, but it will be like. <laughs> burnout. How to prevent burnout. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, let's do what Katie said. Characters who are Enneagram 3. All right, number three. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, my greatest fear is of being worthless. Oh dear. We're getting deep tonight, guys. <laughs> okay, let's try another book riot one. This is... This is... This is crazy. The Achiever. Oh, okay, okay. I've read Ace of Spades. I've read Seven Husbands of Hugo. Haven't read Percy. Oh, oh, Poppy War. Jade. God. Sh yeah, I can see that. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, we have to do that then. Wait here. Guys. Guys. It's time to read the Song of Achilles. <laughs> I was gonna put this in another video I've got coming up, but let's just read it now, why not? Oh, look at my, I love this edition. Isn't it the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? I enjoyed Cersei. Cersei was a four star, but everyone's told me I'm gonna love the Song of Achilles even more. Oh my God, we're reading the Song of Achilles. And here's the thing, it says threes are very, I'm not jealous and competitive. The lies, there you the go, lies. this bitch. The lies. Lies. I don't feel like I'm a three. There's certain parts of this that aren't meshing with my idea of myself. But here we go, I'm a three of one and we're reading, oh my God, we're reading the Song of Achilles. Thank you, Katie, I guess. <laughs> I'll read like a hundred pages maybe, and then I'll check in with you, oh my God. I started Song of Achilles yesterday. I didn't get like super into it. I was supposed to read loads yesterday. I read 50 pages and then I read another 50 pages. So I'm a hundred pages in. I love, I freaking love it when a book has a ribbon. Oh my God. <laughs> Can we just talk about, I think this is one of the most beautiful books I own. Like I am slightly obsessed with it. I think it's just so gorgeous. Okay, so if you don't know what this is about, which I'm sure most of you do, we are following Achilles and his relationship, friendship, relationship with Patrocl Patroclus. I shouldn't say friendship, they're gay. <laughs> it's like when there's like women in history and the historians like, they were really good friends. <laughs> like Pompeii, like two women in an embrace. <laughs> they were really good, they were besties. And they were roommates. Yeah, it's their love story, basically. I don't know if I've said Patroclus, Patroclus, I, listen, I can, I can barely speak English, guys, as we know, my pronunciation is terrible. It is their love story. And so um, at the point I'm at, they are both about 16. So we've kind of had them meeting and had them growing into kind of young men together so far. I have gotta be honest, there's a lot of pressure riding on this. Like I rarely, when I post I'm reading a book on Goodreads, have people going, oh my God, yeah, wow, you know, in, in the comments, but this got that. And that got me feeling a little bit like, Whew, shit. <laughs> 
it's a little bit riding on this. I didn't immediately feel grabbed by it, but I'm enjoying it more now that I'm 100 pages in. I got a bit rattled. The first 50 pages, I was kind of bored. I was like, mm, nodding off a little bit. I was like, oh God, I don't know. But I feel like I'm slowly growing into it. This is going to be this slow, epic story of their love, I feel like. And um, I'm here for it. I'm growing into it. But it got me thinking, right? There's certain styles of writing that accompany like styles of book. So like fairy tale esque stories that draw their draw their draw their inspiration from I feel like English folklore or like Russian folklore or like they often mirror perhaps some of the writing style of the original, you know? If it's a book set in Victorian times, I feel like often they can have similar writing styles because you're mirroring stuff that was written in that time, right? And so this is obviously a Greek myth retelling. And I do feel like having now read, I've read Circe and I read Silence of the Girls. I'm sure I've read more, but those are two that I've read recently. I'm not sure the writing is entirely for me because I love fairy tale, right? Like writing, you know, I love Russian folklore, like writing, um, you know, think of the, the Baron and the Nightingale, but I'm not sure Greek myth, I think Greek myth retelling has some of that fairy tale likeness to it, but it also has like a hardness and a sharpness and a roughness to it. It mirrors the cutthroatness of what often happens in these books. And it's quite almost, it's somehow fairy tale like and to the point at the same time. And I don't dislike it, but I'm not sure that writing style is ever gonna be my favorite. I'm not sure I'm ever gonna have a favorite book of all time that's a Greek myth retelling at this point. I okay, and this is, the, this is the bottom line. Everybody was thinking it, I just said it. I feel like they're always kind of a four star, but there's something about them that isn't quite a five star for me. That's my initial observation. I almost wish I hadn't read The Silence of the Girls before I read this, because if you don't know The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker, you follow Achilles and Patroclus in it, and that's why I know what happens. When I, before that, I didn't know what happens in their kind of myth. And I feel like the direction this book goes in would perhaps have been more emotionally impactful uh, had I not known that. And they're not, they're like kind of focuses of the book, but also like the, it's called The Silence of the Girls, like the women, um, are more focused in that book. So I kind of wish I'd read this first and I think that would have been the better order to read them. I feel like it's perhaps taken away a little bit from this, but obviously the events of this have not yet caught up with the events of Silence of the Girls yet. I feel like it's only gonna be right at the end. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna try and get up to page like 200 at least, but maybe like 220 tonight, I feel like might be reasonable. So I either check in with you tonight before I go to bed or first thing in the morning. But yeah, I'm slowly getting more into it, but I wasn't initially in love with it. Okay, hi. <laughs> Here's the thing, the lighting in my kitchen, the window's over here, so we're kind of like half lit. But let's chat. <laughs> um, I'm making lunch. I'm gonna roast some potatoes and bell pepper. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I love it with some eggs all chopped up in a bowl together, some ketchup. It's so good <laughs> for lunch. I have just gotten to page 220. So I'm not far off the end. I'm about 130 pages from the end. So I thought, two birds, one stone, I would chat to you whilst I chop food. Potato. I love potatoes, guys. Aren't potatoes just the best food ever? So the section that I just got up to, we have just met Briceus. Briceus has just turned up. And Briceus, I feel like she's not gonna play maybe a massive role. I don't know, in this one. But she is who the Science of the Girls follows and is told from the perspective of. So it's just interesting to see different interpretations of the same character. I would say there's already quite a different interpretation between the two characters already. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. But I'm not like, it's not five star. And I feel like that's sacrilegious. Like I feel like people are gonna be mad at me. <laughs> you better f***ing take that back right now. You better stop it, stop, 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 stop right stop. now. Patroclus, if that's not his name, I'm really bad at pronouncing his. If that's not his name, like that's really bad because like half the book is him telling people like, how to say his name. He's a very interesting character to follow. He's kind of very introspective and just the way that he kind of, you know, looks at Achilles and looks at everything in the world. I don't know, it's very interesting. So I like reading from his perspective. I have come to the conclusion with what my problem is with Greek myth retellings. The problem is, right, any Greek myth retelling that is like, is staying pretty true to the Greek myth in terms of the events that are happening. It has certain plot beats that it has to reach. This myth 
surrounding Achilles. Like these are predestined plot points. And so it kind of just feels, I don't want to say unoriginal. <laughs> it kind of feels predestined. Like the book, I'm never feeling surprised at where a plot goes. And that's not because I know the plot. I don't really, other than having read Silence of the Girls, like pre this, I knew nothing of this story basically. But I feel there's no surprise. I feel like there's no, because it's not something the author has necessarily come up with themselves. It just feels like we know what we've got to reach. We're filling in the blanks and we're doing it in our own writing style. The writing style in this is beautiful, right? But <laughs> I think I would perhaps prefer Greek myth retellings that like reimagine and go on a different plot beat or like whatever, because it just feels constrained by its past and like what has already been written. Does that make sense? It feels constrained. And that's why it can't be a five star. It can be a four star. I can recognize that this is incredibly written, that I really like the reading experience, that it's a great quality book. But for me, I don't feel like it can be a five star because it just feels constrained by what it's retelling. So that's how I'm currently feeling. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. If I cry, I'll show you. If I don't cry, I don't cry. But <laughs> um, I will see you. Hopefully when I finish this, I'm gonna finish it this afternoon. this made me properly cry <laughs> this year oh my god okay <laughs> okay hi <laughs> oh the ice cream man's here <laughs> so finished song of achilles i cried a lot but i'm still gonna give this four stars okay <laughs> no one be mad at me i'm very sad that i read silence of the girls before this i still think silence of the girls is a great book but it's it's serving a different purpose. And I think it's not going for that emotional impact <laughs> as much. And I think the emotional impact of this would have been greater had I not read that book and I didn't know what was gonna happen. Cause I would have been, whoo, gagged, you know? But I knew what was gonna happen. It's the same story. A lot of people probably go into this knowing what's gonna happen just cause they have like knowledge of Greek myths, but that's not me. I have no knowledge <laughs> of anything so listen i really enjoyed it it made me cry i think it's the first like i said i think it's the first book that's properly made me cry this year which like it feels good you know it feels good, it feels good to get that emotional release because it, it's been lacking a little bit this year i love a good cry to a book i'm easy pickings and nothing has been making me cry i really enjoyed it I'm really excited to read more that Madeleine Miller puts out in the future, but I am yet to read a Greek myth retelling book that is five stars for me. And I think it is those conventions of the genre and of the style that kind of prevent me from giving them five stars. Maybe would have given it five stars had I not read Silence of the Girls first. But I still think Silence of the Girls is a great book, but like I said, they're going for different things. They're telling this story in completely different ways. 
but with the same plot points. So like, I know what's gonna happen. So I need to now message Katie to find out who our last booktuber is gonna be <laughs> to get the prompt from. Sometimes I do four booktubers in these videos, sometimes I do three. I was aiming to do four, but I don't think I've got time. With the amount of time it takes me to like get the prompt from the booktuber, usually it's like a couple of days till someone's free or whatever. I don't think, I don't think we're gonna fit four in because it's currently Wednesday afternoon and I want to get this video up by Sunday and I just feel like it won't happen we won't quite fit two in unless for the next prompt I end up reading a graphic novel in which case we might consider it so this will, this will probably be the last booktuber but like it might not be anyways I'm gonna go message Katie and then I'll check in with you when I have the next prompt whatever that may be and actually I'm back <laughs> just a quick comment I actually haven't moved it was like two seconds um do I see myself in Achilles no absolutely not because the whole point, the whole reason I read this obviously is because apparently I'm the same type as Achilles. I don't think I'm type three on the Enneagram. I just don't. I don't see myself in that. I do like me. Yes or no question. It's a yes or no question. Do you like me? So yeah, I didn't see myself in Achilles. Like his kind of cutthroat ambition. Uh, here's the thing. I have ambition and this is something okay we're getting into this here but i have ambition but it's not through competition with others i find that really like soul destroying i remember when i moved to the school where i met tom it was it's like this all boys school from year 7 to 11 and then the girls can join for the last two years so i was there for the last two years and i feel like they're like the way that they were taught to like measure their self-worth and like measure how good they are is like, am I beating everyone else? Like, where am I in the pack? Like, you know, what's my position in the pack? And like constantly measuring, am I doing better than this person? Or like, I mean, not saying Tom's like this, but it's what I saw in other boys at the school and like just the attitude of the school, you know? And I, I'm not like that. I think I only measure my ambition. Of course, sometimes I compare myself to others, but in terms of what motivates me, it's like in comparing myself to myself. You know, of course, sometimes I compare myself to others and go, I wish I was doing as well as them, yada, yada. But in terms of what motivates me, it's only comparing myself to myself. And I think that's what differs from like the perception of a type three from what I've read. Cause I don't, I don't identify with it. Anyways, <laughs> that was a little, a little bit of a segue. I'm going to go make some dinner, message Katie and see what prompt I'm going to get next. Okay, friends, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> It's late, I've just washed my hair, but right before I washed my hair, I got the prompt from our next booktuber, our last booktuber, I'm not reading anymore. <laughs> yeah, I got the prompt through and I was like, okay, it's gonna be late by the time that I react to it, but I need to find out tonight what it is. So the next booktuber that we're getting the prompt from is Isabella from Throne of Pages. <laughs> <laughs> I love Isabella. Isabella is one of the booktubers I watch the most. She's actually one of the booktubers I watched the most before I started my channel. So I've watched her for years and years and years and I'm excited to see what she's gonna come up with. I kind of don't trust her though. <laughs> like, I'm nervous. I'm feeling nervous. I'd rather, I'd like to have an easy book, please. Like I'd like something fun, quick, short. That's what I'm feeling at the moment. So let's see how we go. I actually, I'm like, sh I'm shaking. I'm literally shaking. Shame shaking, I'm physically shaking. Anyway, it's too late to question Lisa Barlow and her iconic lines. I'm shaking. I'm physically shaking. Hi, how are you doing this fine evening? Good. I hope you're doing well because that's about to end. You're legally required to not hate me for what I'm about to tell you. But for my reading prompt, I'm going to be taking you on a little scavenger hunt. Oh. I have gathered a couple of words that are based on my favorite books and you have to read a book or several books where you find these words. I know, I know, I, my mind. Here are the words that I want you to find for my little scavenger Wait, hunt. Picture, seven, see, normal, and throne. Five words, it can't be that hard right so best of luck i'm glad i'm not you and have fun <laughs> does she mean the title <laughs> i'm just gonna text her to clarify what she means because if it's the title i'd have to read five different books <laughs> okay i just got clarification <laughs> so it's not in the title it's whilst i'm reading the book okay so like I have to read a book and it has to have all those words in it. Now, here's the thing. Let me, oh my God, this prompt. Look at, look at what she just sent me. 
She's laughing at my pain. I can't take this. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I need to read The Devotion of Suspect X this weekend, like over the next couple of days for uh, Kayla's Literally Dead Book Club. So I have to read this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with this. <laughs> but like, I don't think this is gonna have Throne in it. Like it's a detective Japanese thriller. Like I don't think it's gonna have Throne. I feel like I'm gonna read these words and then just like forget that I've read them. <laughs> okay, we're gonna read this cause I have to read it this weekend. And then hopefully we'll tick off most of the words. Holy shit. <laughs> most hideous experience for me to go through how horrible and shit. Hopefully we'll take off most of them with this book. And I just like want to skim it and see like <laughs> how many of them are in here. I haven't seen any of them yet. <laughs> we could get none of them from this. I mean Right, I'm gonna go start this. <laughs> Guys, I literally haven't moved <laughs> from when I told you, but um, I just, I haven't read any of this. I opened the first page. It, the first line is at 7.35 a.m. That's literally the first thing, 7.35. And I checked with Isabella, I said, does that count? And she begrudgingly admitted that it counts. We've got one, tick, tick. Tick, 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 seven, that it doesn't say the word seven, it says the number seven. It's the same thing. Oh my God. It's fate, okay, bye. <laughs> I am over, I'm very red. What the hell, it is hot, but I feel like I don't, I'm not actually that red in real life. <laughs> I am over halfway through The Devotion of Suspect X. I'm actually, I'm on page like 250. So I've read that much, got that much left to read. I've read quite a bit of it. And that's just like this afternoon. I've like not been able to put this down, but I don't know what's, I can't put my finger on what is like grabbing me so much about it. It's just like an easy read. Firstly, I know, we'll get into plot in a sec, but I know the most important thing is what words we've ticked off. <laughs> so, out of uh, Isabella's five words, we had seven right at the start. We have had picture. I noted down where they were, hang on. <laughs> A picture of the illustration went up on the nightly news that evening. And we have had normal. If she didn't have a particular reason not to go, wouldn't it be normal to accept a friend's offer to go to dinner? So we've got three out of five. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out the labels. Me. <laughs> See and throne. I don't think we're gonna get thrown in this. I think we're gonna have to read another book for it. But C, I don't know, we haven't been near the C yet and it has been pretty self-contained. But I'm pretty happy that we've got three. And like maybe if we can find just a really short book that ticks off C and Throne, like I'm okay with it. <laughs> uh, can't even Isabella may read two books probably. Anyways, so yeah, we're following this woman who's a single mother and her ex-husband, what do you know in the synopsis? Her ex-husband turns up you know very little in synopsis, but I feel like I can tell you. It happens, like, what I'm gonna tell you about happens in the first 40 pages, okay? That's what I can tell you, it happens in the first 40 pages. So yeah, single mum, her ex-husband turns up, she's been trying to run away from him, he was abusive, and he turns up and he won't leave her alone, he's threatening her, and she like, you know. And so the rest of the book is kind of following her and the neighbour who helps cover it, who helps her cover it up, and the police trying to figure out this crime. And it's just such a compulsively readable thriller. I read some reviews before I started reading it that said the characters, they didn't like it because the characters were like very without any characterization. And perhaps that's true, but I just think the plot is really good. Like a book doesn't have to give me everything. For, I think to get a five star it does. I don't think this is gonna be a five star, but for, for me a solid four star thriller, you don't have to give me characterization. You know, like, it's like I can let things go, you know? If I can't put you down, I'm okay with the characters being a bit, you know. I think we've got intriguing characters though, and really the push and pull of this book, and it's kind of mirrored in some stuff that's happening in some of the characters, like conversations that they're having. But like, what is harder? Devising a crime that is impossible to solve, or trying to solve that crime. Like, which is a harder thing to do? And I think that's a really interesting thing to think about that you don't often see. And I often read thrillers more, as you guys know, where like, you don't know who done it. Like, right? that's the whole point of the book. Whereas in this, you know who done it. <laughs> and so the whole point is 
hoping. I mean, I like fucking kill that guy. I don't care. Death, Death to, to all, all of them. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. I want Girlie, her and her little girl, her little daughter to succeed in life. I don't, if he's collateral, I don't care. <laughs> so I'm like rooting for them. And so you are, I, you're hoping that like the crime isn't solved, but then like little things are happening. You're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, you know? Um, and there was just something that happened in the last chapter that like, I feel like the whole book is gonna go in a completely other direction now. And I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> things have changed and it's going down a slightly more sinister route than I expected. But yeah, I don't know how, I'm really a bit nervous about talking about this for Kayla's book club because I feel like I'm just enjoying it and just kind of reading it. And I'm kind of like no thoughts head empty, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't know, we'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish it tonight and then I will check in with you in the morning with what I'm thinking. But yeah, it's a fun, fun, enjoyable read so far. Okay, last night I finished The Devotion of Suspect X and I've ended up giving this a 3.5. I didn't love the second half as much. I felt like that kind of, I mean, I still read this in one evening. I started this at three o'clock yesterday and finished it last night. So like, I didn't put this down. However, <laughs> I didn't feel like it had that same pace, that same intrigue. I felt like the, questions that I don't want to spoil anything but the questions that kept me reading in the first half and excited were kind of dissipating in the second half and there is a twist right at the end of this but I don't know if it's really a twist like I feel like you can kind of see it coming and I just feel like it's kind of forgettable it's kind of forgettable you've been very very harsh nice to meet you Kelly very harsh I mean, like, I read it fast, but I feel like it's gonna go from my brain fast. It was fun while it lasted. We had a fun time together. It's like a little fling, you know? Short summer fling <laughs> is what me and this book are. Like, it was fun. You're not the love of my life, you know? I don't really have many thoughts about it other than that. I'm really nervous for the live show because I'm like, what the hell am I gonna say? It was fine. It's kind of like my overwhelming feeling. The one I woke up, I was like, I kind of already am forgetting what happened in this, you know? So I'm glad I read it, but it, it wasn't perfect for me. But Bad news, this didn't have See Your Throne in it. <laughs> so I've been looking through my shelves for something that's quick that I think will, and we're gonna go with The Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo. This is really short and it has loads of illustrations. That's a weird one. Um, <laughs> it has loads of illustrations. Actually, <gasps> C, oh my God. <laughs> I saw the picture, I was like, oh my God, that's a boat. C. <laughs> This is a story about a girl named Lucky. Okay, so we know this has C in it. It just needs to have Throne. And because this is Grishaverse, I feel like it's going to have Throne in here somewhere. If not, we really are in trouble. But I'm just going to go ahead and read this. Um, I got the audiobook, actually. I got it a while ago. So, yeah, we'll just read this. It's just about all the different saints in the Grishaverse and their stories. And I think it will be a fun, quick read. I'm not expecting this to be incredible. This isn't a five-star prediction. But I think this will be a fun, quick read. And hopefully, we know it already ticks off C. We just need it to tick off Throne as well. <laughs> This had C and Throne. <laughs> Success. I couldn't take reading another book for this vlog. So we had C, where was that? We saw that together, didn't we? A captain took his crew to sea, and then I wrote the other one down, Throne, where are you? As the king grew older, he worried that his death would bring chaos for the kingdom if each of his sons vied for the throne. We did it! <laughs> in terms of this, it's a little book. It took me maybe an hour to read because it has the pictures and any time that a short story doesn't end on this page, like it has that kind of filler page, there's like, it's like half the pages that it actually is, you know, in terms of like reading. I'm gonna give this a 3.5 as well. I think for what it is, it's nice, it's lovely. It's an enjoyable read, basically just following all of these saints. I found it quite interesting reading the story and then seeing what, that had made because at the end it said Saint Nikolai is the saint of da 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 you know like it would say what they're the saint of at the end and I thought it, I found it quite interesting seeing 
what the story was and then how that related to like what people in the Grishaverse <laughs> prayed to them for. I don't really have many thoughts about it. Listen, I actually, I quite, listen, I'm not a Grishaverse girly as you guys know. I mean, I know Six of Crows Crooked Kingdom are in the Grishaverse, but to me they're not steeped in the Grishaverse lore as much as other stuff. And I did enjoy this. It was a version of Grishaverse lore <laughs> that I did enjoy. I just don't think it's anything particularly special. I listened to the audiobook just to like help me get through it. Ben Barnes narrates some of them and then the usual audiobook narrator of the Grishaverse books narrates the other ones. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Like, there's not much to say. It's a nice quick read. I think if you're doing a readathon at any point where you want to read loads of books, this is a great option. Like, if you're trying to read a book a day for a week or something like that, this is a great option. Um, and listen, it got me seen and thrown, so I am eternally grateful. <laughs> I do like a book that's kind of like, not a book in itself, but it's like a teaser or like, a, it's, it feels like bonus content or an Easter egg for the rest of the world that has been built up. So there we have it, everyone. That brings us to the close of this vlog. Oh my God, this <laughs> was an experience, this vlog. I feel like I went through it. But all of the books were like kind of just okay or like good, you know? We didn't really have, we had a 4 or 4, 3.5 or 3.5. So like very similar ratings throughout. But I had so much fun getting these booktubers to help me choose what to read. And I feel like the books that I got to read were a good mix of like newer books on my list and books I've been meaning to read for a long time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of any of these books down below or what you would have read for any of the prompts that had been given. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.